We welcome you to another Sunday School lesson. Sunday School is a blessing and gift from God. Generally people love powerful things. However, instead of being so captivated by the power of man-made technologies, we should be in awe of the power of the omnipotent Christ. This lesson focuses on the true story of Jesus walking on the water. This incident left a lasting impression on the disciples resulting in true worship. Events in this lesson occurred during the third year of Jesus' ministry. Jesus miraculously fed a multitude which was another confirmation of his messiahship while using the demonstration to teach his disciples. After feeding the five thousand, our first verse says, Immediately Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowd. Jesus compels the obedient disciples to get into the boat and go to the other side of the lake, while he sent away the five thousand that he fed, near Bethsaida which was at the northeastern end of the Sea of Galilee. Once the leftovers have been collected, Jesus returns to his original plan of spending some time alone. Verse 23 says, After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone. When the crowd was gone, Jesus went up the mountain by himself to pray. Jesus was the Son of God, but in becoming man he was dependent on his Father, just like we are. Jesus had much to pray about. He made time in his busy schedule to be alone with the Father. Verse 24 goes on to say, And the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. The disciples were around four miles away from land, when their boat was battered by the waves. No doubt, these disciples had experienced such weather before, some of them had earned their living fishing these very waters. They knew how quickly a calm sea could become a tempest. It wasn't the water that was the problem. It was the wind blowing against them. Verse 25 says, Shortly before dawn Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. The disciples have been struggling to keep afloat for a while. At the early morning hours, while it is still dark, Jesus decides to go to them in the middle of the sea. In verse 26 Matthew writes, when the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. When the disciples see Jesus, they are afraid. The storm, while dangerous, is familiar. The disciples know what to expect from a storm and what to do to keep the boat afloat. They do not know anything about men walking on water far from land, and fear that they are seeing a ghost. Thinking they were seeing a ghost caused them to scream in terror. Verse 27 says, But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage. It is I, don't be afraid. Over their cries of fear, Jesus calls to them, Have courage, it is I, have no fear. Jesus reveals himself not simply as Jesus, their teacher, but as, I am. This self-revelation is a disclosure of Jesus' source of power. The last time Jesus revealed his power over the chaos of the sea was within the confines of the boat. Now, he is displaying his power in the death-defying stunt of walking on the sea. There was no need for the disciples to continue to be afraid because the one walking on the water toward them, in the midst of the storm was Jesus himself. Verse 28 says, Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Peter's response was one of hope mixed with uncertainty. If it's really you, tell me to come to you on the water. Whenever we find ourselves saying, if it's really you, we are facing an identity crisis, not our personal identity, but our understanding of God's identity. Peter's query was not simply to prove that this was Jesus and not a ghost, but his request was an act of faith. His fear was gone and all he wanted was to be with Jesus. 
This should be the desire of every believer, to be with Jesus no matter the circumstances. It takes someone with great faith to get out of the boat and walk on water. Verse 29 says, Come, he said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water and came toward Jesus. Jesus calmly obliges. Okay, he says, come on then. In other words, Jesus granted Peter's desire to come to him. Responding to Jesus' call to come, Peter got out of the boat, in the midst of the storm and walked on the water, to go to Jesus. The Lord honored Peter's faith by giving him supernatural power to walk on the Sea of Galilee. In verse 30 Matthew writes, But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Peter steps out of the boat, headed for the one he trusts. But then Peter notices the wind's strength, and his faith in Jesus melts away. Lord, save me, he cries out in fear. For some reason Peter turned his attention to the strong wind around him causing him to fear for his life. Focusing on the storm and not on Jesus, Peter was beginning to sink in the sea, but even though his faith wavered, he was not completely without faith. Peter called out in prayer to the only one who could save him from drowning, Jesus. Verse 31 continues to say, Immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? Responding to Peter's cry for help, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. Christ's time to save is, when we sink. Jesus mildly rebuked Peter saying you of little faith, why did you doubt? Those whom Jesus loves and saves, he also reproves and rebukes. Faith can be true, and yet weak. Peter had enough faith to bring him out on the water, but not enough to carry him through. According to Jesus, Peter's problem was doubt, not unbelieving, but uncertainty. Our discouraging doubts and fears are a result of the weakness of our faith. The object of faith is to resolve doubts, the doubts caused by the storms in our lives. The truth is, if we could believe more, we would doubt less, and that pleases him. The best way for us to grow in our faith is to constantly read, receive, learn, and apply scripture to every area of our lives. Verse 32 says, And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. After Jesus saved Peter, they both climbed the boat and the wind ceased. All storms end, but the sudden end to the storm was even more evidence of the power of Jesus. Our final verse says then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. In the last 24 hours, the disciples had witnessed Jesus feed 5,000 men, not counting women and children, walk on the Sea of Galilee, and finally calm the raging storm. There was only one proper response, those who were in the boat fell down at Jesus' feet as a sign of reverence and devotion to him, and declared truly you are the Son of God. This occasion is meant to reveal who Jesus is. But that revelation is only possible in the midst of the chaos. If Jesus had not forced the disciples to embark on this uncertain journey, they would have missed the opportunity to see God revealed in their midst. Like Jesus, we should set aside time to pray. Spending time with God in prayer nurtures a vital relationship with Him and prepares us to meet life's challenges and struggles. It's important that we develop the discipline of spending time alone with God. It will help us grow spiritually and become more like Christ. The Lord Jesus sent His disciples away so that He could be alone to pray. We would do well to follow His example. Jesus demonstrated his power over creation by walking on water. Suspending the laws of gravity is a manifestation of unlimited power. Jesus did this by his own power, therefore Jesus showed his Godhead. Though at a distance from his disciples, he knew their distress, he found them on the lake, 
and probably in the midst of darkness, and he walked on water. Omnipotence Jesus cares for his people when we are fearful. The Lord may send us into difficult places and situations, but he never abandons us. As the Master, he sends us, as the Intercessor he prays for us, and as Savior he delivers us. We should always keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Peter's experience teaches that as long as our attention or focus is on our circumstances and not on Jesus who controls our circumstances, our faith will not grow. When Peter's faith faltered, he reached out to Christ, the only one who could help him. Peter was afraid and we may be too, but he still looked to Jesus. It's very unlikely that we may ever walk on water, but we do walk through tough situations. If we focus on the waves of difficulties around us without looking to Jesus for help, we too may despair and sink. In order to maintain our faith when situations are difficult, we must keep our eyes on Jesus' power instead of our own inadequacies. Jesus' actions and power makes it clear that we can trust him as the Son of God. Many of the storms of life are the result of some unwise decision or choice we've made and therefore, are our fault. But there are other storms or trials that we face which God brings to develop our faith, to know the Lord is with us and is strong enough to get us through. We need to have great faith whether Jesus is on the boat with us or not, because great faith assures us that he is always nearby. We are truly glad you spent time to learn this lesson with us. We hope you are blessed and may share these with somebody else. We wish you can join us at the Kubau Church of Christ soon. Our congregation is a place to discover faith, find new friends, grow closer relationship with Christ and serve with each other's gifts. Thank you very much, have a great week, and God bless you always, dear brothers and sisters.